The word globetrotting means the action of traveling widely around the world. He's not traveling wide, that's your opinion. You are not talking I mean, sexy. The, the Namibian listed how many... The Namibian listed this morning. Desert Radio is the home of robust debate. Has this just been rhetoric over the years? We have had the same promises. We can bring it down to one thing, that the president is divorced from the reality faced by ordinary Namibians. Brutal, honest, and cutthroat conversations. All ministers that are currently benefiting from government vehicles, entertainment allowances, that's the way people think that political power and political office and leadership is about an opportunity to eat. Divergent views and a cross-pollination of ideas. Okay, so it does seem uh, that we do have Honorable Nani on the line again this morning. Honorable Nani, can you hear me? I can hear you. Fantastic. Good morning uh, from uh, a uh, quite a chilly Ventuk. How are you doing in Pretoria? We are also having a very chilly morning. A very good morning to our listeners throughout the breadth and the length of our great republic, Namibia. Indeed. Thank you so much for making some time for us this morning, Honorable. And we just quickly want to touch on uh, the speech you made yesterday, but also uh, we just also want to, uh, a little bit later in our conversation, of course, uh, touch on uh, the African Union turning 60s tomorrow. But we'll first uh, jump into the conversation regarding uh, your speech at the Pan-African Parliament. And in that speech, you did mention that the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement does represent the main free trade agreement since the foundation, of course, of the World Trade Organization. Perhaps just speak to us on how the timing of uh, this this free trade area agreement uh, plays a crucial role in number one implementation, uh, particularly considering the, the current global trade context that we face right now. Well, thank you very much for your sequel and question. Um, you see, the multilateral trade globally has really gone down to a number of a variety of, of reasons and factors, uh, factors of uh, climate change that influences it, factors of uh, geopolitics, the war situations in a number of parts of the world, such as Ukraine and so forth. So it is opportune, at least for Africa at this point in time, to galvanize um, itself to, 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 to try to attract enough foreign direct investment to propel its own growth at home. I must say, just as a footnote, yesterday a, 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 a brother or a, probably the richest man on the African continent with the name Aliko Dangote has commissioned an unstable uh, petroleum refinery in, in Nigeria. Mm, that's true. Uh, and it, it, it's a big step. You know, when, when you speak to Dangote and, and when he narrates the story how 11 years ago, he had the dream of creating this refinery. You remember for the last 60 years that Nigeria is nearly independent. The resource, the oil resource that is in abundance in Nigeria is always processed in Europe. That's where you have companies such as BP and all these big companies making oil in that part of the country. Now, can you imagine the amount of foreign valuta that was lost in Nigeria without them processing their raw material? So I think that's the footnote to start. I, I want the, the listener to really start contextualizing that. The minute that Namibia as a country start adding value to the resources that we have, what are the three resources, main resources that we have? Africa generally has a young population, 60% of the people.